Welcome to Sightings. I'm Tim White. Thanks to you, we've received many home videos showing what may be the brief appearance of UFOs. But one of the problems we face is that it's very difficult to analyze a one-time event. Ufologists are looking for UFOs that appear again and again and offer a chance for closer examination. Just such a series of UFO encounters is occurring in the skies above Pennsylvania. A local resident sent us his startling footage. The first reported sighting occurred in 1991 in Newton Township, just north of Scranton. Since then, dozens of people, including state and local police, have witnessed an unexplained show of lights. The first home video was shot by Gary Steyer. He started monitoring the skies after his daughter, Christy, reported a bizarre encounter with a UFO. I at first thought it was another car, but I looked out towards the back of me and I noticed there was no car in back of me. And I, I was adjusting the mirror and I noticed an object in the sky. It was flying behind my car and I kept watching it in my rearview mirror. And eventually it went over to where I could see it looking out the window. It kept following me driving down the road. And then I made a right-hand turn to come up onto the road coming up towards my house. And this object made a right-hand turn. And by this point, I was getting really scared. She drove into the driveway, ran up to the front door, came flying in the house, and said something was following her. And then when she told me it was above her car, I didn't know what she was talking about. Since Christy had been the only one to experience the light phenomenon, the Steyers thought it must have been an isolated event. But a few months later, the lights returned, and this time the extraterrestrial display was witnessed by more than just one person. While driving home on January 8th, Gary and his wife Nadia saw unusual lights hovering in the distance near their house. They rushed home, and Gary got out his video camera. This time, he was able to get the UFO on tape. It was uh, a feeling of great excitement because these things were happening right before your eyes. You didn't know really what these lights were, what was happening. Uh, it was like an adventure. Being a respected school teacher, Gary Steyer was hesitant to call the authorities, fearing public ridicule. But when the lights continued hovering for several hours, he finally decided to alert the police. 911 emergency. Do you want to report what? And within a matter of minutes, Officer Callie arrived along with three state policemen. And as I taped, they stood alongside of me with their handheld radios in my front yard. The dispatcher told me he received a call from a resident in the community that there was a uh, strange object in the air above his house. When he initially called me, uh, he didn't want to give me anything but his street address. He didn't want to give me his uh, full name or phone number uh, because he didn't want to be associated with something that sounded this bizarre. I didn't believe initially when I received the call that I, there would be anything of substance to that I would see. Immediately upon exiting my police vehicle, I looked up in the air and I saw four or five bright objects up in the air. There's one right alongside one of it. Above the three towers and and over another one just flashed. Officer Kelly called into his dispatcher and asked him to check with the local airport tower to see if they were picking up anything on radar. Lights. All right. Well, let me look. It was one of those real crystal clear nights. There wasn't a cloud in the sky. We looked out the window over towards where, where he was talking about, and uh, sure enough, there were some lights out there. According to local sources, there were no commercial or military aircraft in the area that night, and nothing was picked up on radar. But despite this, half a dozen witnesses reported seeing a UFO. They had no aircraft uh, in the area of the Triple Towers and that uh, no airplanes were supposed to be in that area and nothing was picked up on radar. I felt that there was possibly a problem with the radar system. Uh, shortly thereafter, he contacted me back and said that they checked it again and there's nothing up there. The lights appear to be most active over this area, Bald Mountain. Pam Zakowski is a local newspaper reporter who first broke the UFO story. She was an impartial observer until she hiked to the top of Bald Mountain with UFO investigator Irene McDonald. Near the summit, the two women had a terrifying encounter. We were merely poking around, actually trying to see where, where Gary Steyer's house was from the top of the mountain. 
when two men in a pickup truck pulled up, drove up the access road, and they both got out, and one was older and one was younger. They both had guns, and they were incredibly angry. They said, you're trespassing, you know you're trespassing, what are you doing up here? I said we were just taking a walk in the winter. I wasn't going to say we were up there looking for evidence of UFOs. When I saw their intense anger and their guns, I knew that in 30 seconds or a minute, I either would be alive or I wouldn't be. We agreed to leave, but we had only been up there probably maybe five minutes at the most. And what's unusual is the fact that almost everybody at one time or another in, in this area has climbed that mountain for exercise or recreation and never have, have been threatened with a gun. Pam Zikoski never saw the two men again and believes they were not local. She ran a search on their license plate number, but that has only deepened the mystery. The plate number does not exist in any Pennsylvania motor vehicle record. The identity of the two men is still unknown. Could their appearance be somehow related to the unexplained lights in the area? After the incident on Bald Mountain, the UFO activity has only increased, and more witnesses have come forward. It was just about dusk, and as we were there up by the power lines, all of a sudden, these objects started coming up out of the treetops. They were just everywhere. Seeing wherever we turned, there was another one. I just remembered not hearing a sound. But not everyone in the area believes the lights are UFOs. Karen and Bob Siemens own the airport in Factoryville, about 10 miles south of Bald Mountain. They believe people are simply sighting their newly installed beacon. I think because we had put a new beacon up and people in the area were not used to seeing the light, I really think it's just too much of a coincidence. Investigating the Siemens theory further, we took Gary Steyer's footage and overlaid footage of the airport beacon taken from the same angle. Using the grid system, it appears impossible for the beacon and the lights to be one and the same. We also took the videotape to ufologist Jeff Senyo. After careful analysis, Senyo has concluded that the lights are not conventional aircraft, nor are they a hoax, and they're definitely not emanating from the beacon. My impression of this tape is that it certainly wasn't faked. Here, all of the unusual lights are moving laterally. And so an airport beacon light doesn't move laterally. So that couldn't explain any of the five interesting points that I found on this tape. As if in response to increased interest in the lights, the UFO activity has subsided in recent months. But the people of Newton Township keep their eyes and camcorders pointed to the sky, anticipating the return of what some believe is an alien spacecraft. All I know is that we taped some unusual lights and objects in the sky. The night of January 8th did happen and I wasn't the only person that saw these things. There were hundreds of other people who had similar experiences, but they didn't have video cameras in their hands. And all I can say about the tape is that it speaks for itself. Right now, the skies near Scranton are quiet. However, local residents say that the UFO...